Hi there everyone! It is such a joy and a privilege to be in your homes today and to bring you the Word of God. My name is Marinette and together with my amazing husband Paul, we get to be the lead pastors of Hope Church and we absolutely love it. Well, our world is facing a pandemic. We're facing a crisis and people all around us are suffering and you and I, we all affected in some way by this COVID-19 virus. Questions that people have wrestled with all over the years include, why is there so much suffering? Where is God? And how does God feel about this? And maybe these are some questions you have today. And I really hope that through my message, your heart will be filled with hope and that you will know that our God is good. I have entitled my message today, Where is God in all this? About a week ago, God laid it on my heart to read through the book of Lamentations. And at first, I thought maybe I didn't hear God right because I'm in a, in a place of need. I really need to be encouraged. And the book of Lamentations is written by Jeremiah, who's known as the weeping prophet. And Lamentations actually means, according to the dictionary, the passionate expression of grief or sorrow, weeping. So at first, I didn't know how I was going to find encouragement in this short book in the Old Testament of only five chapters. But wow, I read through Lamentations and I am so encouraged. It was the perfect passage for me to read during this time. And I'm going to share with you today specifically from Jeremiah 3. And just really trust that God's going to do something big in your life as well. Jeremiah at the time was weeping. He was lamenting for his people. You see, Jerusalem was being destroyed by the Babylonians. And that just broke Jeremiah's heart. And he cried out to God. We're going to read Lamentations 3 together. And before we do that, let's just pray and commit the rest of our time into God's hands. Father God, we thank you so much for your Bible. God, we, we thank you for your word that is alive and active, God. We thank you that your words that go out from your mouth will never return to you empty, but it will accomplish what you've purposed to do in our lives. I pray that today, Lord, that you will fill us with hope, and that we will know like never before that you are with us and that you are good in Jesus name. And all God's people say, Amen. In verse 20, he says, I am depressed. Perhaps that's how you're feeling today. <laughs> you're starting to lose hope and you're starting to feel depressed and, and down. But something incredible happens in the very next verse, and we need to pay close attention to this. In Jeremiah 3 verse 21, Jeremiah says, Then I remember something that fills me with hope. Jeremiah just said, I'm depressed. But then he remembered something that filled him with hope. What is this that he is remembering? We, we need hope. I need hope. You need hope. What is it? that we need to remember. In verse 22, Jeremiah says, the Lord's kindness never fails. If, I had not, if, if he had not been merciful, we would have been destroyed. The Lord can always be trusted to show mercy each morning. Jeremiah is remembering who God is. He's reminding himself that God is a 
kind God, that God's mercies are new every morning. God is good. And God isn't just kind to you and me because of something we've done that deserves his kindness. No, God is kind to us because he's got kindness built into the fiber of his being. And God is faithful. He is trustworthy. He will never let us down. He's not shaken by all of this. He is steadfast. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 5 says, May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the steadfastness of Jesus Christ. May God do that right now. May he direct our hearts to his love and to the steadfastness of Jesus Christ. You see, so much has changed in our world in just the past few weeks. But our God never changes. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is immovable. Outside of our faith in Jesus Christ, there is no steadfastness. Jesus is the solid rock on which we need to stand. Any other ground is sinking sand. So you and I need to do what Jeremiah did. He remembered who God is and he was filled with hope. I really think Jeremiah is a very, very good mentor for us. Jeremiah 3 verse 24. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. <laughs> Jeremiah is talking to himself. I think you and I need to talk to ourselves more often. He's saying to himself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I have hope. What on earth does it mean to say, the Lord is my portion? It almost sounds like we're saying we each get a portion or a piece of God. No, that's not at all what it says. The, the Greek word for portion is inheritance. So it means we have everything. We lack nothing in Jesus Christ. In Ephesians 1 verse 18 to 20, the Apostle Paul prays a prayer for the Ephesian church. And he prays this. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope he has given to those he called his holy people who, who are his rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe in him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Did you notice that the Apostle Paul didn't pray that these believers would receive the inheritance and the power and the blessings? No, no, no. He prayed that they would realize and understand it already is theirs. You see, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is inside you and I. Greater is he who is in us than he who is in the world. There's nothing we cannot do because Jesus Christ is in us, in, inside of us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So you see, when, when Jeremiah says, the Lord is my portion, therefore, I have hope. What he really is saying is he's saying all I have is God and all I need is God. And that is where we need to find ourselves in a place where we know that all we need is God and all we have is God. 2 Corinthians 12 Verse 9 is one of my favorite passages, my favorite passages. And Jesus says, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. We are finding ourselves in a place of weakness. And that's where God's power works the best. We can expect 
to see miracles and breakthroughs take place in our lives. We are already hearing so many stories of people who are getting healed and stories about God just providing in this time of need for people supernaturally. Are you ready to see a breakthrough in your life? We can really be expectant. In verse 25, Jeremiah says, The Lord is good to those whose hope is in Him, to the one who seeks Him. Can I encourage you today that if your hope is in God and if you're seeking Him, you can expect to see the goodness of God in your life. In verse 26, Jeremiah said, It is good to wait patiently for the Lord to save us. We, we do find ourselves in a place of waiting. We're waiting to hear what is the next step for us all. And one thing I've learned through the years of serving Jesus is that in the waiting, there's a lot to do. We don't just sit back because waiting is not passive. Waiting is active. So we show God our faith. And we pray and we serve God wholeheartedly and we serve people as we wait expectantly for God. In this next part of my message, I really want to speak to young people. I believe God has a word for you. And when I say young people, I mean specifically between the ages of around 11 and 12 to 25, 26. This has been a challenging time for you. It hasn't been easy, but I want to encourage you that God is using this time. He's using this, this virus to do something incredible in your life. He has a very big plan for you. In verse 27, Jeremiah says, it is good for people to endure burdens when they are young, hang in there. The New Living Translation says, it is good for people to submit at an early age to the yoke of his discipline. Can't encourage you enough. Submit to your parents, submit to authority and submit to what God is doing in your life. In verse 28, Jeremiah says, and to sit silently alone if this is what the Lord intends. You may feel alone and isolated from your friends and missing them, but this is a time where God is drawing you closer to Him. And I can't encourage you enough to spend time in His presence. God wants to speak to you and tell you incredible things. I believe that God wants our young people to endure, to submit, and to sit in his presence. Because this is what I feel God is saying. God is saying that he is raising you up to be the strongest generation of Christian leaders this world has ever seen. Isn't that incredible? So it's hard. So many of you are feeling overwhelmed with your schoolwork and your studies and some, some of our young adults may have just started a job and you started out with great expectations. You never expected to just suddenly one day be told to go home and take all your leave now and possibly you won't even get a salary at the end of the month. I want to encourage you that God is doing something incredible in your life and He's preparing you to be part of this generation that's going to declare the name of Jesus like never before in this world. I want to pray for, for you right now. So if that's you, if you're between the ages of 11 and 12 to 25 and 26, all you need to do is say to God right now, Lord, include me in this prayer. And he hears your prayer. Fantastic. Let's pray. Father God, we want to lift up our young people into your hands today, Lord. God, we thank you that you are doing a deep, and meaningful work in their lives right now in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, Lord. Lord, we thank you that you are raising them up to be the strongest generation of Christian leaders our world has ever seen, God. And I pray that you'll help 
each and every one to endure, to submit, and to sit in your presence. In Jesus' name, Amen. We love you, young people, and thank you so much for tuning in. In Lamentations 3, verse 33, Jeremiah says something that's very important for us to understand about God. He says, He does not willingly bring suffering or grief to anyone. My first miscarriage was, was hard. It was my first pregnancy and we, we were living in Zambia at the time. So Paul and I had to go through to Namibia to, to a place called Vintuk to see doctors there. And at first, the doctors weren't sure if I was miscarrying or not. They, they told me my hormone count was keep going up and my womb was still close and they could only confirm after lots of tests that I did in fact miscarriage after four days and it was a very difficult time for me and I remember on that day that that we heard the news and they scheduled for an operation to take place the next week I decided to go to church it was on a Sunday in my pain in my sadness and I can't remember what much about what happened on that Sunday but what I do remember is I was sitting in church desperate broken and suddenly a man went on stage at a random time of the service and he said I don't normally do this but I believe God's got a word for somebody here today and he said God wants you to know that his heart is breaking for you God laments for his people God cares for his people God cares for us and his heart absolutely breaks to see us suffer. When Seth, our oldest son, was two years old, he had to have his tonsils removed. And the night before the operation, as we were at the hospital in Bloemfontein, at about 10 o'clock, he wasn't allowed to drink anything or eat anything anymore. So by the next morning, when I took him to hospital, he was really hungry and thirsty and I remember him begging me for some water telling me his throat is sore and I, I wasn't allowed to give him water and I said no my boy you can't have water and asking me for something to eat I'm hungry mommy and I said mommy I can't give you food now because you're having an operation but he didn't understand he was only two years old it was so hard for me he was crying for for something to eat and drink and I had to say no because I knew it was the best thing for him and then the anesthetists, the anesthetists and the doctors and nurses arrived and they said, it's time for the operation. I said, okay, Seth, come, let's go. And we started walking towards the, the theater room and the doctors and nurses said to me, no, you can't come. I was like, what do you mean I can't come? They said, give us your son. I was like, um, I was like can I not come with and just until he's like, until you're ready, they're like, no, you need to give him to us. And, and he started clinging to me and I started pulling him off me and the doctor started pulling him off me and he's like, mommy, mommy. And I'm like, my boy. And they took him down this long, cold passage and he was screaming. And as those silver doors closed, I just heard, help me, mommy. I was shattered. I was broken. My child was crying out to me and I could not help him because I knew this was what was best for him. If it breaks my heart, if I feel so bad to see my child suffer, how much more does it affect God's heart? The, the only way that I can feel or care or love is because I'm made in the image of God. Have you ever given this thought? That if you feel bad about the suffering in this world, that God just feels so much worse. In verse 37, Jeremiah says something else that's very important. He says, who can command things to happen without the Lord's permission? In the CEV, it says, no one can do anything without 
the Lord's permission. This you and I need to know. Our God is all-powerful. There is no other power but His power. He is sovereign. He ranks completely above this virus. He can stop it right now, but He's allowing it to happen. Why? I'm not exactly sure why, but I do know this. He loves us and He cares deeply for us. And His ways are not our ways. His ways are so much higher than our ways. And what we see happening in our world is there's a real spiritual awakening taking place. Lost people, broken people are turning to God and they're surrendering their lives to God. And believers, we are, we are growing and our faith is becoming stronger and more than ever we are calling on the name of Jesus. God is working. And can I tell you this? God is way more concerned about our eternal destinies than our comforts here on earth. Sometimes I think that God cries with us on earth so that you can laugh with us in heaven. In verse 40, Jeremiah says, let us examine our lifestyles, putting them to the test and turn back to the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts and our hands to God in heaven. It's time to examine our lifestyles. We are going through a season of testing and test reveals things. It's a time for you and I to make sure our priorities are right. Is God number one in your life? See, it's so easy for over the years to, to start having idols in our lives. It could be a sport. It could be money. It could be a relationship. It could be our work. We need to make sure that God is number one in our lives. We need to seek Him first above any other thing. And then we will also have anything else that we need. In verse 48, Jeremiah says, Streams of tears flow from my eyes because my people are destroyed. My eyes will flow unceasingly without relief until the Lord looks down from heaven and sees. Jeremiah is teaching us here to never give up, to persist in prayer, to keep asking, to keep knocking until a door opens. In verse 50, 55, he says, But I called on your name, Lord, from deep within the pit. You heard me when I cried. Listen to my pleading. Hear my cry for help. When we call on the name of Jesus, he hears us. He hears every prayer you pray. And he sees every tear that you cry. To say that I, I love the next verse is an understatement. I love this next verse. In verse 57, Jeremiah says, you came near whenever I called you. You said, do not be afraid. So we ask a question, where is God in all this? Right here, with us. And he's saying, do not be afraid. Let that sink in a little bit. The God who is love, who is full of kindness and mercy and compassion and goodness is saying, I'm right here with you. The greatest force in the universe is saying, do not be afraid. If God is for us, who can be against us? Our last verse for today is in Lamentations 3, verse 58. Jeremiah says, you came to my rescue, Lord, and you saved my life. God is our deliverer and you will get us through this COVID-19 crisis. God's plan for the world has always been to save and rescue his people. The book of Jeremiah is as much about God's lament as it is about Jeremiah's. You see, God so passionately loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins so that nobody has to go to hell, but that everybody can go to heaven. God doesn't want anyone to spend their eternities in hell. 
God didn't send his son, Jesus, to the world to condemn the world or to judge the world. No, he sent his son, Jesus, to rescue us and to save us. And today I want to encourage you that God is right here and he's saying, do not be afraid. If you have not yet given your life to Jesus Christ, I want to give you that opportunity right now. If that's you, I'm going to pray a prayer and you can please repeat this prayer after me. Father God, thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to die for my sins. Thank you, Lord, that you are with me. Thank you, God, that you love me. I now give my life to you. And there is no turning back. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you've just given your life to Jesus, welcome to the family of God. It's the best decision you have ever made. Please let us know about your decision. You can WhatsApp us on 062-214-2814. Or you can send us an email at hello at hopechurch.org.za or go onto our website and you will find a booklet there called My Destiny in God and you can download that and work through that and let us know you've given your life to Christ. We want to help you find your next step and we will help you on this journey with God. We are so excited about Saturday we having our first Saturday of the month prayer. And then on Sunday, we have hope at home. Go and share this message with your whole world. We can't wait to see you again. Thank you so much for watching our YouTube channel. We really pray that you find it helpful in your journey. And we also really want to encourage you to take your next step by signing up to join a small group or to do discovery. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share this with as many people as possible. And we really can't wait to see you next Sunday.